Kendrick Johnson hanging out with Ryan Babyface, but knowing he will be fighting at UFC 228 Dallas against Roberto Sanchez. Yes, sir. One week away. What's going? What's going? What's going on? You got butterflies, or you just you already in fight mode? Nah, I'm I hope you got fight mode. Don't go off for me. <laughs> nah, I'm I'm ready to go, man. I'm I'm uh, I'm ready to get this weight off. I'm ready to. Uh, I'm done with fight camp already. This last week of uh, training is pretty much just a fight against the weight cut. Um, <clears throat> that's kind of our main focus for the next week. We got our game plan. We've been going over it for weeks and weeks and weeks. We already know what to expect. We already know what we're gonna do. We already know expect what he's gonna do. So we're just ready to do. Just just ready to go to work, man. I know you're probably gonna get tired of hearing this all week. So I'll be the first to ask. The, the, the weight cut a, a big thing because well, last time I know we you know you, you're used to them being on point with your weight. Yeah. This one kind of like just a one-off deal. Yeah, you know, it was it was kind of a weird situation last time we were fighting in Australia, so we had like a long 20-hour flight to get there. Very much like out of our element, out of our environment. Um, the sleep pattern and the change, the time change, the, just our nutrition, everything was very thrown off uh, while we were out there. And uh, I, I approached my weight cut and my diet plan a little differently for that fight than I did for this fight. Um, and I'm fighting at home this time, so it's a lot easier. I get to I get to go to my normal spots to eat. Um, I get to take my regular supplements. I get to sleep in my own bed. Um, so all those factors play in a huge effect. I get to go to the gym and use the same sauna that I'm used to using. So I, I, my routine is perfect. I, I don't really have to change up too much besides coming back from New York City back to Texas. but. It's a little more relieving because I get to come back home and cut weight. So I think I think that process makes it much easier than it would last time. My weight's actually much lighter now than it did. You're looking good. Like you can yeah. get on that thing today. Get that sauna in there. I'm a, little, I'm a little heady today, but I could probably do a couple sauna sessions and make weight already. You, you talk about being home multiple times in that answer. Tell these people about how the support, about the support of the city of McKinney and fighting for them once again because we, you, you put two and zero at the, at the airline center, and how probably was that the most gratifying win in your career so far? Probably the Pettis knockout uh, right here in your own backyard. I mean, that was definitely a pretty gratifying win. I think the last fight, the head kick knockout over that turf that I was fighting, was was probably the most satisfying win that I've ever had in my career. But uh, you know, it's always it's always a really warm, comforting feeling fighting at home. I get to fight in front of my hometown. People I went to high school with, um, you know, my teachers even get to go see me fight because it's local. Because people ask me constantly when I'm in the UFC, like, oh, you know, when are you going to be fighting at home? And it's like, I can't really give you an answer because we fight all over the world now. So um, being able to fight at home is just, it's a real blessing. And I'm really, like, I'm really happy with the opportunity to perform at home again. And I have a good, good record at home. I don't lose when I'm at home. I, I had one little hiccup in my career, early, early in my career, and, like, I think it was in 2010 or 2009, maybe. You got the active system. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was good for me, though. It was good to, to get what that feeling felt like at home and to lose in front of people or, or just to have a close fight. I didn't really count that fight as necessarily a loss. It's a blemish on my record, but I still felt like it was just a really big learning experience. And anytime you had a loss, I like to self tell myself, I don't lose, I learn. So I think from that fight and from my previous fights, it's kind of formed me into the guy and the man I am today and it's really created a, a, a different different fighter and uh, man I'm excited to fight at home. I'm really I'm really happy that everybody I'm around gets to go watch the fight. How's being an all state wrestler at McKinney North gave you the foundation to do what you do today? I'm pretty sure when you yes. were running around up in North you didn't think like, man, I'm gonna be up in Octagon smashing some places. <laughs> you know, I've been here in like five, six years. I actually remember when uh, my teacher when I was in tenth grade asked me what I wanted to do when I got older and I told him I wanted to be a UFC fighter. And this was like when Forrest Griffin had just fought to Stephen Bonner. And he was like, ah, oh, the octagon. And I think that he kind of like, I don't think he really believed me, but I mean, from the people that grew up in McKinney and the people I grew up around, they knew that fighting was more, it wasn't like a, um, um, it wasn't like a thing of anger or aggression. We used to meet up in, in fields in McKinney and we would fight in the cornfields. We'd line up all our trucks around and we'd just have a good go at it. And it, we would shake hands afterwards and you become best friends with the guy that you just had to scrap with, you know? And I remember my wrestling coach having to like, you know, take the boxing gloves from us in the locker room because we try to get out of wrestling practice early. And we'd be like, hey, you know, you're going to box Sammy today and, and Brett's going to box Johnny today. <laughs> and it was just like, it was just something we all loved and we all, we all like, were really passionate about. And, and the UFC kind of came at that right time because it was wrestlers were dominating the UFC at that time. Matt Hughes was smashing everybody. Chuck Liddell was knocking people out, but he grew up as a wrestler. Tito Ortiz, Ken Shamrock, you know, all these guys were the top. Not the legends out there, man. Yes, man, it was it was awesome. And, you know, we had, uh, Guy Mesker was also, uh, had the lion's den at that time. So it was like, 
UFC was really popular for us. So I remember pulling up in the parking lot of Hooters, and we would just sit there because we couldn't get inside. Either you had to pay or you had to be 21 to get in. So we would just sit in the you parking lot. You had a double negative. Good, right? And especially for me, I looked like, you know, when I was 14, I looked like I was like nine. So it was like I was really struggling to get by. But, man, we all loved to fight. So I think... Uh, the people from McKinney and the people that I grew up with are really proud of me at this point. And they, I think it's kind of something that they could see in the future a little bit that I was really passionate about fighting. And it wasn't that I was a bad kid and I would get into street fights all the time. We just loved to scrap. You had good hands. Yeah, I had good hands. I like seeing people, I like seeing people drop and I like, I like taking advantage of my wrestling because I was a little guy, but I could take down like, I'll wrestle guys like your size and I'd be able to get around him and get a takedown. Hey, I, I don't know how to take down. I don't know how to sprawl. You got, you got a message for that teacher now that you're doing your things. Look at this man now. <laughs> On the UFC, doing this thing, you know, and has a chance to make a run. That's right. Which leads to my next question. Is it a big deal to get out that win loss win loss? Is that weigh on you? 100%. Or like, I know you got a you go to, with a different camp. You get your diet right. And we gonna see the best baby face coming up. Yes, definitely. You know, I'm just really sick of this win loss win loss because it puts a big question mark over my name all the time. People are kind of like questioning if I'm if I'm where I should be, and it's like. I'm sick of this win-loss, win-loss. I want to get a couple of wins in a row. I want to really be able to put a stamp on my name and say, you know, and, and put a statement of like, yes, this is where I belong. This is where I should be. This is why I'm getting multiple wins in a row. I'm, I'm tired of being on the edge of like getting two losses in a row. It's like the most depressing, devastating feeling on the planet when you get two losses in a row. And I've, that's actually never happened to me before. I've always bounced back from my losses quickly, but unfortunately in the UFC, I've gone win-loss, win-loss, and I'm, I'm really sick of this, man. And I'm trying to like, I'm trying to campaign myself towards like, you know, I, I'm, I'm tired of, of this routine. I want to keep getting better. I want to keep growing. I want to really like start getting higher up in the rankings. I want to be able to call out somebody that I want to fight, you know, and it's like when I'm a win-loss, win-loss, I'm still kind of in that. I'm still in the UFC, but I'm a little bit more lower on the totem pole in the UFC. So I want to start to get to stop getting injured, man. That's kind of been my, my big hurdle in my career is that I either break my hand or, or something happens. I've had a multiple injury. I've had eight surgeries in my career, which is a lot for somebody like at my point. I've broken eight, I've broken my hand eight times and most of the time it's been in the first round and I still finish the fight. And actually it's kind of a tradition. A lot of times when I break a hand, I still win by knockout. Um, so I would like to like, continue climbing that direction but calling out somebody you know at the at the point I'm at in my contract I just want to keep it going man I'm, I'm not really concerned with calling anybody out yet I want to get two wins in a row maybe three wins in a row and once I get those three wins in a row I think I can really like maybe I can get a, a rematch with somebody or maybe I can call somebody out that I lost to or or something like that you know I got a lot of guys on my hit list that I would like to I'd like to get those wins back I'd like to get that win back from Brandon Moreno, I'd like to get Ben to win back, but uh, before I, I start getting up there, I, I just want to I just want to make money as much as I can, and stay here as long as I can. Just promise me and my co-hosts, when you start calling them out, you gonna come with a slip and dip. That's right. We gonna give you that platform. That's right. <laughs> I will. Cause you ball, you get the call, so we gonna be giving you. We expect to give you a call. In a I, couple will, of I weeks. will tell you, I will get in that microphone. I'll tell Joe Rogan, like, hey, slip and dip, help me get this fight that I'm looking for, man. I need you guys' help, so let's, let's explode. <laughs> that was this. Big let's start calling somebody out and let's let's keep moving forward, man. So. And, and final question for me, you you touched on it, fighting at home and stuff. It's kind of crazy how big McKinney's grown just since you left like the last decade. Right. How much pride did you have? Do you have like you because you travel, you're a world traveler, right? And then you put McKinney on the map, right? You and Ronald Jones and football. Yeah, I just yeah. feel to be kind of be part of that little, that little really small professional yeah. athlete fraternity that y'all got growing at McKinney North. Dude, it makes me proud, man. I hope I can put McKinney on the map, and it's it's really nice to be able to like kind of go around in McKinney after fights and like. I'll run into somebody at the gas station and they're like, hey, you Ryan? And it's like, it's the coolest feeling ever because in my hometown, it's like, I get the most exposure and I get the most love and support. So it's like, uh, I'm really proud to be from McKinney. I'm really proud to like start putting us on the map. We're, we're a growing city. We have like the biggest football stadium, I think, in, in high school sports. $70 like, million. Dollars. I was there last 70, night. $70 million stadium, man. They've been working on it hard for a while, too, and it's beautiful. When you drive past it, man, it's like... It's an incredible sight, so uh, I hope I can put McKinney on the map for, for MMA fighting now instead of just football. But you know, I'm really proud of where I'm from. I'm really happy, and uh, I hope I can keep it growing. Ladies and gentlemen, check this man out next week. Ryan Babyface Benoit, great guy, representing Texas, representing McKinney, and hopefully he can get that hand raised. And when you ball, you get the call. We will have you on the Slip of Their podcast. I appreciate it, man. Thank you, guys.